You know, there are all kinds of lists. Now, if you're like me, you have a to-do list. This is actually my daily to-do list. And I'm really old school, so I write things down that I need to do. And then I tackle everything that's on that list. And I do it one at a time. I get the things that are most critical done first. And then if I don't finish the list, guess what happens? The next day, those things I didn't finish go to the top of my list. And of course, I get those finished first. My to-do list keeps me organized and it keeps me on task. Um, now, my wife and I, we, we keep a grocery list. And actually, we keep two of them. We have a Sam's list, and I guess now there's a, oh, a Costco list. Yeah, that's, that's a happy thought. Um, and, when we, and, and then there's a, a Kroger list. And when we grow, go grocery shopping, we only buy what's on that, on that list. And that way, we only get what we need rather than buying everything that's in sight. Now, on a side note, my wife didn't follow this list when the new Costco opened. Um, as a result, she went there with my son, and she spent double what she normally does, which got her put on another list that I have, which is my resentment list. Okay? So she's right there at the top. Then there's one of the most difficult lists to compile. I, I, now, how many of you, when you're getting married, you, you, you put together this wedding guest list? Okay, how many people recently got married? Raise your hand. I see you, a couple there. All right. How many fights did you get in uh, over the list of people? Yep, it's one of the main causes of, in fact, I've heard of people just about getting divorced before they get married. Um, this is where you ask Aunt Helen and who everybody on your dad's side of the family can't stand to the wedding. However, if you don't invite her, you'll insult her son, Billy, who's always been one of your favorite cousins. So this is tough stuff. And let's face it, you don't like all of the future husband or wife's family and friends. Um, you know, remember that. And, and this, uh, this is not in my notes. When you get married, you are marrying all those crazy people. Just know that. So just, it's, it's funny, people will go, oh, but it'll be fine. It really isn't, you know. All of a sudden, you have all these, you're like, do we have to go to their house? Yes, they're related to you now. So this is one of the most difficult lists that you'll ever make is that wedding guest list. Man, planning for weddings is fun, isn't it? I've got a couple of people I'm going to be marrying soon, and I know they're about crazy at this point. Um, yeah. Another list... And this one's kind of a cool list. It's the bucket list. I mean, it's cool, man. It's, have you, on the, in fact, it's so popular that they made a movie about it. Did any of you ever watch that movie? It was awesome. It was a great movie. This type of list are the things that you'd like to do before you meet Jesus. So here's the world's most popular top 10 bucket list. And by the way, I don't know who in the world decided this. When I looked at the list, I thought this was, would not be my top 10, but it's pretty cool. So here you go. First is see the northern lights. That would be very cool. I've heard this is awesome. Um, I've never seen it, so that would be cool. How about run a marathon? No. Why would that be on anybody's bucket list? I know there are some runners. I, sorry. I know I've hurt some feelings. Um, how about taking an African safari? Now, that's cool. I know some missionaries that have done that, and that, that's really cool. Um, write a story. So, in other words, write a book. I know some of you have been working on books. You know, I kind of do this. I write a story a couple times a month, and that's, I'm doing that now. Um, so, I like doing that. Um, walk along the Great Wall of China. Now, that would be cool. This item topped bucket lists for 40% of the people that was surveyed by the Daily Mail, whatever that is. But that's pretty significant. Learn to play an instrument. Now, how many people don't play an instrument and you wish you could, right? So, well, come over to my house. I've got a drum set. You could come over. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but yeah, learn to play. I've done that one. Um, snorkel at the Great Barrier Reef or just go snorkeling. Anybody not gone snorkeling? 
Oh, it's so fun. It is. I love that. A little snorkeling trivia here. I was, where were we at? We were in Mexico, and I was snorkeling along, and all of a sudden, I came face to face with this huge barracuda, literally. And I kind of slowly did this backwards, you know? And then come to find out, he was like the resident. Everybody said, they had a name for him. I thought, well, that was not fun. So I'm not sure I'll ever do that again. I'm skydiving. That's something I have never understood. Why would anybody jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Have you, anybody done that? Did you soil your pants if you did? I'm just curious. I'm thinking I would. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Um, how about this one? Own a dog. Believe it or not, there are people that have never owned a dog. So, you know what? Get a dog. Dogs are awesome. And then here's the last one. See the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. That would be super, super awesome. You know, there are scheduled maintenance lists for your vehicles. You know, that's an important one. There are timeline lists. There are brainstorming lists. There are checks, checklists, um, index lists. What other lists am I missing? Well, apparently you're not listening. So that, that's okay. Um, which, <laughs> and here's the thing. There, the index list, by the way, is a list of all of the lists that you have. That's pretty interesting. You know, lists are important because here's what they do. They keep you focused. You're on task, and they give some order in your life. And one of the most important lists that you're ever going to make is contained in your inventory that you compiled during your fourth step. This list contains the people who have hurt you and those that, that you've also hurt. Um, this might be one of the most impactful and important lists that you'll ever make. Um, and, but making the list isn't what's important. Yes, while it is very, very important, completing the assignment, which is completing steps eight and nine, is what's important. This is not a list that you can simply acknowledge in your head. You have to put this, this list on paper. It's very important. And writing these names down will be, begin the cycle of healing in your life. You've already cataloged your character defects and moral inventory, and now you're going to examine some of the same situations from a completely different angle and different perspective. Tonight, we're going to take a look at how to construct the list. That's what I've entitled this. And this is how you'll effectively work step eight. Now, first, we're going to exa examine the process of working this critical step, step um, including exactly who and what needs to be on that list. And then we'll decipher the process of becoming willing, which is really the most difficult part of step eight. And then, of course, we will next, in fact, my next teaching on this, we're going to look at another aspect of working steps eight and nine, which is forgiveness. So make sure you're a part of part two. But first, let's take a look at step eight. We made a list of all persons we had harmed, and we became willing to make amends to them all. You see, step eight is the beginning of the, of the process of making amends. This isn't the time. Here's what I want you to do is, is not freak out. When you're making the list, you're not going to pick up the phone immediately and start calling people. Um, you've got to get prepared, and you've got to get a place in, in your heart and in your head where, where, you can, where you can really do this. Now, according to the Free Dictionary, making an amends is reparation or compensation for a loss, damage, or injury of any kind. So in layman's terms, what does that mean? Making amends is making things right for the wrongs that you've committed. I don't have that in your, in your, uh, in your notes there, but I think that would be a great way. You might want to jot that down. Making making the, uh, the, here's my definition. Making an amends is to make things right for the wrongs that you've committed. Now, remember, in step eight, you're only doing the groundwork here before you make the amends. Step eight and nine are kind of the precursor to what we call reconciliation and restoration. Before you can restore re relationships, you need to identify the relationships that have been damaged. And that's why 
you're making the list. You're taking responsibility for your own part, not someone else's. And you're, you're doing that cleaning up your side of the, of the street. Have you ever heard of that, where you're cleaning your side of the, the street? Well, let's take a look at how to do this. So first of all, I want you to get your, get your bulletins out. Have you got them? All right. We like to hear that shaking. If you don't have a pen, there's one in front of you. Here's why I want you to take notes and make sure that you write. If you do that, you're going to remember this message. So make sure you take notes, okay? Now, the first step is quite simple. You need to start your list. Start your list. You can't finish something you don't start. If you're like me, you've pro procrastinated far too long because you aren't really excited about steps of nine. How many of you are really excited to make amends for, to everybody that you've hurt? Oh, some of you are. Well, that's good. Most people aren't. I did want, not want to pick up the phone and call some of these people. But Benjamin Franklin famously said, he said, don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. And this is important. In fact, I think that should be in the Bible. Amen? That's a powerful, powerful statement Benjamin Franklin made. The hardest step is to start. So you've got to get busy. Start writing down those names. And begin with the obvious ones first. For some of you, it's going to be your ex, right? Um, maybe it's your kids, um, your parents, your extended family. You know, people that you stole from. Were there any, is there, are there any thieves in the house? Of course there are. Raise your hands, liars. Come on now. All right. See, that's, that's the other thing. We steal and then we don't tell about it, right? Um, <laughs> Um, romantic partners that you've hurt. How many people have hurt your, your romantic partners? Yeah. Employers that you took advantage of. Maybe you cheated on your taxes. Believe it or not, you need to make an amends for that. Chances are, you, the, the reason that you added these people to the names, uh, to the list, is because you did hurt them. So uh, what I did is I just started naming names. Fact was, there, it was harder to find people I didn't hurt than those that I did. So I just started writing names down. Now remember, you've already compiled this list of people, and you did that in your inventory in step four. So many of the names, all you're going to do is transfer them over into the, the amends list. It's very, very simple. However, when completing this, step li this list, there are going to be a lot of them that you missed, which brings us to the next step in the task. Go to the Lord in prayer. Go to the Lord in prayer. And ask him to reveal any other people you need to include on the list. Now, I'm going to tell you, he is going to include some people that you don't want on that list. There will be people on there that have in, indeed hurt you too. There will be people that you think, well, I meant it when I hurt them, right? But I'm going to tell you, God will open your eyes to things that you might have forgotten He'll open your eyes to things that you blocked, and he'll open your eyes to ones that you need to make right. Daniel 2.22 says, he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what, what's in the darkness, and the light dwells with them. God will reveal those things that are blurred from your memory in order for you to deal with them. So when they come to mind, look, I was, would get woken up in the middle of the night, and literally, I, I had my tablet there, my, my, my notebook, and I would write down that name that came to mind. And after you've completed your list, you're ready for the final step in the process, which will complete, you'll complete this step with your sponsor, and this is categorize your list. Categorize. Now, sequence and timing is everything when making an amends. And by categorizing your list, you'll be better prepared. It's, it's really important to tackle these amends in the proper order. Okay, and this will help you do this. Um, 1 Corinthians 14.40 tells us, but all things should be done, in, it, done decently and in order. With this in mind, here's the four categories. Um, I believe they're in your notes, so you don't even need to write these down. But you need to make peop people, amends, categorize them for people to make amends to now. There are some people you don't need to wait a long time. Um, in fact, you've hurt them, 
And believe it or not, if, if there are people that uh, you, you just, you've got to make things right with now, you'll know that. Talk with your sponsor. And he'll probably tell you, you can do that right now. These are people in your life that you need to, to go and, and, and make sure you make it right before more damage is done. Keep in mind that before you try to make amends, you need to be in a place in your head and in your sobriety that you can effectively attempt to make amends. So if you are sitting here with 90 days of sobriety, don't even attempt to make amends. Because the rejection that you might experience can throw you into a tailspin, and guess what? You're right back relapsing. So, so be very careful. Um, sometimes the hurts that you've caused are super deep. And the person that you've hurt isn't in a place where they are even close to being ready to accepting your amends. So you need to wait on those until you're ready. But again, you do this with who? Your sponsor. Do it with, and by the way, do it. If you've got a sponsor that's a yes person and doesn't challenge you, please get a new sponsor, okay? Because you need a sponsor who's going to not go along with all of your stuff, and they're going to challenge you, and they're going to guide you, not say, well, I think that sounds good. What do you think? Okay? So just that's on a side note. Number two. People to make amends to later. That's the second category. Now, there are others with whom making an amends too soon will further damage the relationship or the situation. Again, timing is extremely important in these situations. Your, your sponsor is going to be an important asset as you prepare for this group. Um, there's an old saying that time heals all wounds. That is not true. Jesus is the healer, and his timing is perfect, okay? So time is not going to make it right. Do this with your sponsor. Make sure that you, you do this prayerfully and in, in, in the right time, sequence. Here's the third group. People you want to make partial amends to in order to not injure them or others. You know, some people, some people you shouldn't even contact to make an amends because your contact would cause more harm than good. Examples would be an ex who has remarried or someone you abused or hurt super deeply. Um, it's oftentimes, guess what? You just don't need to, to reach out to them. Sometimes just being willing to make the amends is enough. You've written them down on paper. You're willing to make the amends. You talk with your sponsor. And, and sometimes your sponsor will say, hey, look, write a letter to that person and read that letter to me. I'll be the proxy, and you can make amends to me. Sometimes that's what you do. But remember, you never want to hurt somebody. Um, if you have, for example, an ex that's gotten remarried, what good would it be to say, hey, hey there, love, love kabushka. Um, I just thought I'd call you. And let you know, I, I'm sorry that I cheated on you. You know, that's not going to do any good. So be smart about that. I don't know where that came from. Love, love Kabushka. There we go. Apparently, I'm Russian tonight. No, number four, people you may never be able to make amends. So there are folks that um, they, they may have moved away and you can't find them. Um, so... Many of my amends were to my mother. Uh, my mom died when I was nine months sober. And I, had, I didn't have an opportunity to fully make amends. I, I tried to when she was in a coma, right, as, as she was dying. And, and I said a lot of, I, I really poured out my heart and a lot of tears. But, but you know, th later on, I went, man, I didn't tell her how much I, how bad I felt about what I said that time or this time. And so, so sometimes you can't do this. And, and so what you, what you do then, again, that's another example of writing a letter and maybe putting a, putting a chair there and writing a letter and prayerfully looking at mom and telling her you're, how sorry you are and you wish you hadn't done that. And so this is a powerful way to people you may never be able to make amends in person. Remember, we're only on step eight. So becoming willing to make amends is the key here. And you're in the preparation stage. You're not in the facilitation stage. So some of you may be saying, okay, so I get this. I've got the list. 
I categorize the list. How in the world do I become willing to make amends? Well, here's some suggestions that have worked for me. First, acknowledge and identify the damage that you've caused. So, first of all, you acknowledge, you, I, hey, I hurt Susie. Um, then what did I do to Susie? So, I, I write those things down, and I just acknowledge it, okay? And I say, I, I did these things. It doesn't matter if the harm you caused was from being selfish or careless or angry or arrogant or dishonest or any other character defect. In fact, it doesn't matter if you didn't intend to cause harm. Sometimes we, we minimize it by doing that, right? We say, well, I didn't mean to do it. Well, the fact is you hurt them, okay? So your sponsor can help you realistically evaluate the depth and the gravity of the harm that you've caused, okay? So, very important. Um, Proverbs 28, 13 says, whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. This is just another layer of coming out of denial. And oftentimes, again, we, we minimize the wreckage that we've caused. And if you're going to start to develop this willingness to make amends, you have to acknowledge the gravity of the damage that you've caused. And again, do this with your sponsor. Here's the second thing. You need to own it. Own it. One of the best ways of developing a deep willingness to make amends is to own your part. Admit it and, and take possession of it, if you will. Proverbs 28, 13 says, whoever, again, this is that same passage, whoever conceals his transgressions, what happens? He will not prosper, okay? So it's very important I mean, you just got to own it and, and just admit it. Far too often, the tendency is to minimize this damage, okay? It's, it's to blame others. So take full responsibility and, and, and just, you know, say, man, I, yeah, I did that. And once you've identified the people you've harmed, acknowledge the damage that you've caused, and then take responsibility for said damage, God will begin, when you do this, I'm going to tell you, it's unbelievable. When you do this, God will begin to remove those scales from your eyes. And, and really, the scales from your heart. He'll start softening your heart. Next, you need to focus on you, not them. Focus on you, not them. Become willing to make amends. Becoming willing requires this inward focus not outward judgment. Don't focus on what others have done to you, but instead focus on how you've wronged them. By looking inward, you'll be, become, become more likely to accept all of the damage that you've done, and you won't obsess over the pain that you've endured. Matthew 7, 3 says, why do you, not, why do you, see, the speck, do you see the speck that's in your brother's eye, but not notice the log that's in your own eye? Yes, you must become willing to forgive others. However, at this point, it's time to take a look at your part. And if you want to become willing to make amends, focus on you, not them. And then, pray. Pray and meditate daily. You know, persistent prayer and persistent, persistent meditation are the key to becoming willing. Let's face it, they're the key to everything. When we pray and we meditate, you are com communicating with the one and only one who has all the power. The one who can and will change you from the inside out. He'll soften your heart and he'll help you take responsibility for all of the things that you've done. Colossians 4.2 says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it and with thanksgiving. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray consistently. I want you to pray continuously. You know, also spend lots of time in the word of God, in the, in the Bible. Some folks will, will say, well, Pastor Lane, I may only be able to read a scripture or two because I'm ADD or I, 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 I only have so much time. You know what? Start somewhere. Just start somewhere. 
The key is to make it a daily habit. Pray and meditate on Scripture. And the willingness to make amends to, to those that you've harmed will be, begin to blossom in your life. It's wonderful to watch how you can go from this person who doesn't care, who couldn't care less about the harm that you've done, to a person who is, who is broken and burdened by the way you've hurt others. That's a beautiful thing. When you work the fourth step, you're doing some personal house cleaning of sorts. And when you arrive at the eighth step, it's more of a social house cleaning. Step eight is all about recognizing and, and taking responsibility for all of the wreck that you've left in your wake while you were actively engaged in your addictive or compulsive behaviors. You see, making the list of the wrongs you've committed helps you to truly understand, truly understand the importance of changing. It's easy to overlook one or two bad events in your life. But when you make the list and you see all of the times that your destructive behaviors have hurt someone, it gives more motivation to change. Listen, I, I came to a point I looked at, at my list and I said, man, I have got to do something differently. The list, your list, will help you foster the desire within your heart to make amends in order for you to move to step nine. Now, some of you are already working on your willingness to make amends. And as you have heard this message tonight, you've been spurned into action. I want to call the worship team up because I think it's a time right now that we need to, to deal with this. And, and, and for some of you, it's, you're, you're already ready for this. There are many of you here that are not even close to being there yet. You're not sure that you even want to make things right. But you're tired. You're tired of the turmoil in your life. And you know something's got to change. So tonight, I want each of you to make a step in the right direction in this road to willingness. And as the worship team plays tonight, I'm going to invite you to come forward. Now, listen, it's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to say, what, what will people think? People will think that you're ready to make a change in your life. You see, staying where you've been all this time has, has given you what you've got. It's time to break the cycle. It's time to own it. And it's time to become will, willing. So will you stand with me? Everybody in the room, let's stand. I want to invite you. So who's going to come down first? Who's, who is first of all will it ready and willing right now? Took step. Yeah. There you go. Come on down. You know what I love? Our teenagers are some of the most excited about this process. So come on down. What about those of you who aren't willing yet? And you say, man, Pastor Lane, I am not even there, but, she, but I, I know that I, something's got to give. Is there anybody in this room that isn't there yet and you're willing to admit that? Will you do me a favor? Just raise your hand real quick. Will you do me a favor? Will you come on down? Come on down. Nobody's going to look at you funny. Come on down. And as, as we go over this reprise, here's what I want you to do. I want to call some of our, if there's somebody that you see that you know right now, will you come down and pray with them? Just put your hand on their back. Will you do that? Okay. And for those of you who are in denial right now, will you step out of the aisles and just come forward? Seriously. And come and just, 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 just let's make this our altar tonight. Let's start with that verse. Caught up in your presence. Some of our prayer partners come forward. I, I sense there are some people who need some prayer. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. 
just want you, Jesus. Nothing matters more than you, Jesus.
Sing that again. Sing to. Thank you for the hearts being open. Amen. Thanks for spending time with us tonight. Those of you watching online, make sure you join us for open share groups at 7.45 p.m. And if you're here in person, go to group. We love you here at CR First LR, and we want you to be healthy and safe in an effort to protect everyone in attendance, both vaccinated and unvaccinated. I need you to do us a favor and wear your masks to open share group. The only time in your group that you could take off your mask is when you're talking. And this is not a political statement, so this is done out of love. And if this, uh, this is only te uh, temporary. Let's love one another and keep each other safe during this uncertain time. Thanks, for, thanks in advance for understanding, but here's your leader's question. Are you willing to make amends to those who you've harmed? Share about it. If not, share what's holding you back. I want to encourage everyone to make sure you go to groups tonight. Newcomers, please join Pastor Lane and Marsha in the guest center. If you're watching online, join and participate on your online groups. But before we go to groups, Jolene is coming to do the serenity prayer. Hello, Forever family. My name is Jolene. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. I celebrate recovery over a meth addiction, and I struggle with codependency and boundaries. Please stand, please stand and join me in the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Thank you. 